Right, hello everyone, and sorry I've been absent for the past month and a bit. Is that about a month and a bit? Maybe two months? Maybe a month and a bit? Not quite sure. Um, doing a quick review here. This is a very belated review, but hey ho, I've had this since December. It's now February the something. <laughs> Probably March when this comes out now in my heads and stills. So basically we're doing a review of the Hytera MD-785 GPS version. Uh, this is the low 25 watt version, there is also a high 45 watt version. Um, the way you'll be able to tell is actually when you look at the frequency map range it will be, the frequency range there will be brackets 25 or 45 which is probably printed on the box. If you get the box you've done quite well because finding these with a box is bloody impossible. Unless you buy it brand new. So, <clears throat> in the box, you'll also get your radio. Uh, mine's kind of pre-programmed. And you'll also receive the mounting, screw mounting screws and accessory bag. Um, it does come with a mic clip that is currently mounted, so I can't obviously move it with me. A SM16A1 mic. Let's just focus. There we go. SM15A1 mic with retractable cord and the multi pin connector. <coughs> the mounting bracket for vehicle installs and an instruction pack or reference pack, I should say. Mine came also with the program cable, which is kind of a necessity for any DMR radio these days. That is not included by standard, you will have to buy that separately. <coughs> And that's everything in the box. So I'm going to put away what we I don't need, which basically consists of this bag, but with the big two screw, the um, big thumb screws I need. So just chuck them back in that box loose. So yeah, that's the box. Nothing on this side apart from a website and a name. Nothing on the back apart from a website and a name. Nothing on this side apart from some bars. Nothing on the top apart from some bars and a name. Nothing on the bottom apart from a recital symbol. And the front just says your model details there. Hytera and their website which is uh, hytera.com. If you're in the UK it's hytera.co.uk. So the first thing we're going to want to do is mount the radio on its brackets. Um, physically looking at the radio. Um, let's readjust your... So, firstly, looking at the radio, on the front you've got four program buttons, technically eight because you can do short press and long press. Programmable key, home, up, down button, menu, and uh, menu one and menu two concepts to work keys. A push to change um, function, multi use rotatable dial. Emergency key or programmable key if you want to use it for something else. On the top, there's nothing apart from some plastic. On the bottom, there's some parts from, parts from some labels and a drill. On the back, you've got your RF connector, power connector, I think it's 26 pin multi purpose expansion socket, I believe. There we go. There. Um, the Hytera do sell accessories for this, you can also make your own. And if it's a GPS model, you also have this little silver SMA connector, or gold SMA connector for the GPS. If it's not in use, you just put the dust cap, dust cap on it. So we're just going to put this in this bracket so you can see. And once it's in, screw it in. So you have two thumb screws either side of the radio <coughs> to mount it in. He says, struggling to find the screw hole. And that's the radio when it's in the stand. So I need, now need to connect the power supply, which I've got here <coughs> on my dubiously made power cable to my modified power, power supply over there. Uh, this only goes in one way, and it's clipped at the bottom to match, and it locks in, so you can't just pull it out easily. And I'll also need to connect to my BNC aerial connector. 
which does in there and turns to twist and lock like most those BNC's will and you can't put the air by accident either. On the front we've got the mic which has a little flat bit there let's just try and get you in focus yep there the little flat bit which you just line up at the top insert and twist to lock so this radio by all definition now is ready to go all I've got to do is fit the power so the power supply is turned on <coughs> and now we just push the power key so a green light indicates that it's powered on you'll then get the screen I've got a custom loader on mine I could probably do with having lights off for this but oh well what I will do though is I will lower the tripod so you can see the screen much clearer uh, there I say zoom you in on the screen. I'm sorry for my um, appalling stills with doing video but you, you, this is what you expect when you do one year of media. So at the moment we're on the UK Digital Group channel so if I want to change the volume you leave it on there you'll have a little volume indicator and just twist up and down. If you want to change the channel inside of your zone push and it'll change the little aerial with a spanner and then just change between them. If you want to change the zone, mine is configured for up and down to change zones. Like so. Um, <clears throat> to show you what this looks like compared to another Hyteria radio, we're going to put it next to the portable version, the PD785, which you'll see from my video view that'll be in the i button up here somewhere. So, we'll put that next to it. And turn on. Zoom out a bit. Tilt it up a bit. Alright, let me just do my password. There we go. Let me see it turns on. This default is subrachnal, so I want to drop down to the UK Digital Channel. So if I key up, it shows here the number, the channel name. It also shows on there that I'm transmitting on Talk Group 185 on UK Digital Group. Um, I have got text alias set up on here. That'll be a tutorial I'll be doing. If I key up off my PD, I haven't got my Talk alias on, which is why you can't... Oh, the sound's just fell over. Which is the reason why it just says 2341903, my DMR ID, primary ID. If I change in here, I should now be able to send my radio alias. So when I key up, it should now say m 6 coc roster hyphen pd And there we go. So you can see now it's switching between the number details and the channel details. Same when you key off up onto the, the PD. You can see it's showing the alias at the bottom and the talk rate number with them changing intimately for the user name and the numbers. Uh, one thing that's quite nice with the high tiers, um, this one does support GPS but it has not got a signal so the area is not connected. You can do messaging. So I'm going to do a quick message off my high tier. <laughs> I'm probably going to put some music here to be honest it's, um, it's a bit boring watching me trying to send a message so I'm going to manually dial my private ID which is oh hello what did I do wrong there and it's sent and as you see on the screen now it's come up with a new message if I want to dismiss the message and continue using the radio with the status screen, I push the top key. 
like so. You will now see I have it also a notification my message bar sends a message. If I go to the menu then, and then go to messages, and then go to inbox, inbox list, and you will there see there is now a message. This has magically appeared. Sent off my PD. Um, Hytera do sell a uh, numeric keypad for the PD-785, or MD-785 I should say. I have not got this because it is out of my price range and I don't really need one. If I need to send messages on the DMR network, I'm hoping I'm close enough to a DMR repeater to use the handheld. If not, um, yeah, I don't really know what to do. I'm probably just forward the message off this to this and then forward it on again. Bit of a dirty way of doing it, it works. Um, inside the menu, this is the same similar menu to a MD PD-785 GPS model. So you have contacts, stand on all high tier stuff, contact list, your favourites, manual dial, and a new contact. Messages, you've got a new message, quick text, inbox, outbox, and drafts. There's some reading there. Call logs, this shows you your outgoing call lists, your incoming call lists, and your missed call lists. Scan shows you also your scan lists on number two. And on number one, where you want to turn scan on or off. Zone is all your zones you have programmed into your radio. Programming allows you to change things like your programming details, slot, color code, transmit, name, receive group list, along with the radio alias. And then you have settings where you have your audio, radio and device info. So audio settings consists of the digital mic, ga automatic game control, I'm trying to think what AGC stood for then, and an audio optimizer which includes a treble boost. If I turn this off, you now get a three band equalizer where you can change the low, mid and high individually. If you go to accessory, oh, settings, I don't know what I'm doing. Gives you power level, whether you want to encrypt your transmissions, language, backlight, day and night, uh, my personal prefer the night mode, the day mode is really bright, so I have a night. I do not recommend this personally, I would rather do it through a key. I also believe that is how the brand most network requires you do it. I don't think you can spam your GPS coordinates every time you talk. I imagine their system would not be happy. Uh, my keys on the bottom are set for transmit power. Squelch, which does not apply in digital mode. Um, I don't know. And I don't know. If I hold these down, you get channels. So if I hold number two down, it'll be Southampton. If I hold number three down, I believe it's analog. Yep, and if I hold number four down, it's Bracknell and Farnell, which are my two local repeaters. Um, physically, the radio is about the same size as a one DIN unit. For that, I have a project I'm working on, which I might feature on this channel eventually. Um, so form factor is about the same size as a one DIN system. Just comparing it to a Pioneer's car stereo. Um, so there are two versions, well, there are four versions, four variants. A, hold on, let me just think this through. Right, there are two bands, I believe the amateurs use. Two, two of these, two bands amateurs use which is the VHF and the UHF-1 so 136 to 174 and 400 to 470 there are then two power output levels inside of these ranges which are the 25 and 45 watt respectively and then on top of that you then have your GPS option board with a GPS, G instantation GPS model and a one that looks like that indicating a non-GPS uh, that label art constantly on the Hytera MD is actually found above the speed grill they also do sell remote mount kits for these, which I would love to get hold of. They also do sell another accessory, which I would love to get, I would kill to get hold of. Which is the telephone handset receiver with keypad and um, on the back. Which is essentially 
thing to it is like a wired one of these for, that controls your MD. So a screen on it and all your keypad controls. If anyone would love to send one of them, please do. They're about 110 quid. I'm not going to be able to buy one anytime soon. If you feel generous enough, contact me. I'll do my paper. But, um, yeah, no, I'd love to get hold of one, but they're so damn expensive. Um, I believe the PC programming cable from the top of my head is about £30, £38 somewhere around there. You might find it cheaper on online. I'd genuinely want it, just because I'd like to have genuine equipment for genuine gear. Personal thing. You don't have to, you don't want to. Um, a couple of quick specs about this radio, which I'm now going to consult the manual about. Yes. I cannot remember everything, and my iPad is being used currently, so I can't use that. <coughs> hint, hint. Yes, I can talk in some weird language. That's Chinese. That's British. It does not give me the specs of the radio, I don't believe. Let's see if any of the things give me the specs. <coughs> I have the Declaration of Conformity. I have the Declaration of Conformity, which does not give me any specs, apart from the, apparently um, the point of contact, contact for any point of this is a Miss Zhong Li. Um, apparently is the person who needs to, who, to contact if there are any problems with your radio in, t in terms of uh, conformity issues. And this covers the MD-782, 795, 786, 788. Didn't even know I did one of them. Uh, DMR radios. I do not believe though. I have specs. Hmm. Hi Tyrion, I'll you to include a manual and not give me the specs for it though. Um, I can tell you off the front of mine, it's essentially the same specs as the PD87. Just with a higher output level with the GPS option port installed in my case. Um, there's not really much to say, it requires a 50 ohm antenna BNC connected at the back, along with a GPS adapter, for all ad adapter slash antenna, I should say. Um, you can get powered GPS adapters that will draw power off the device, if it needs it. Um, obviously there's the third party expansion port on the back, where you can make your own or buy compatible accessories. And that's really about it, if you want to install a remote mounting kit, there are three tech... Um, Hex screws, I'm trying to think what they were called then. Hex screws on the bottom, which allows you to pull the entire fascia off. Um, you then replace that with a mounting port, or a um, remote port to put in and just mount. And then you have your remote kit within all these brackets that you basically fit to the back of this half of the, mo the radio. And then you connect that to here. And it just basically pulls everything off the back end over some cables. Again, I'll be asked about £150, give or take. This is a bloody expensive if you want to get accessories. Even non genuine even non genuines are still expensive and kind of restricted to get hold of. And most non genuines consist of these. Basically fatal looking ones of these, so I can't really say much other than that. Um if you want to have a look at the review I did the High Tira PD seven ninety five, I'll put a little annotation somewhere. Somewhere there, I think. If one pops up, you know I've done it right. If not, um, I don't know what I'm doing with YouTube. That's the easy way of saying it. I've never edited my own videos, so yeah. God help me on this one. This is the first attempt. So um, other than that, I'll say thank you for watching and hopefully I'll be uploading videos a bit more regularly. Fingers crossed.